Hey guys, it's Jess, and today Grace has a doctor's appointment, so we're gonna be talking about what it looks like to get healthcare on the road. At the end of this video, we're gonna be sharing some tools that we use during the first few years of us traveling that were really helpful for receiving healthcare uh, while we were traveling. Thank you so much to Santa Fe and Regeneron for sponsoring this video and encouraging us to share our story. Now that we're settling down in Florida, we've been transferring over all of Grace's doctor's appointments. We previously have been traveling back to South Carolina for all of our doctor's appointments, but it just makes sense to get settled down in Florida with Grace's new doctors and appointments. Grace has moderate asthma and needs to see a lung doctor regularly. So we are meeting her new doctor today. Grace typically does a pulmonary function test and based on the results of that test, they might adjust her treatment. So let's go ahead and go inside for her appointment. All right, so Grace is still inside, but she said that she loves her new pulmonologist. Grace was having episodes of shortness of breath from her asthma every week. And seeing the pulmonologist has helped her to be able to regulate that. When we were flying to appointments from all over the country, we would fly back to South Carolina because that's where we are originally from. And it kind of felt like a vacation to Grace because we were able to go do a bunch of other fun things while we were there. But it's really nice to have everything settled down because we're gonna be coming back to Florida every year for the winter. So getting everything settled down in Florida feels really nice for me and it feels really nice for Grace. So this just honestly just feels really good to get settled down again. Grace is 11 and lives with moderate asthma. We do quite a few things to help her manage her asthma while traveling since we're on the go pretty frequently. The most important thing we do for Grace's asthma is visit the pulmonologist regularly to test her lung function and refill her medications. Grace is on a maintenance corticosteroid inhaler and has a rescue inhaler in case of an asthma attack. Taking her inhalers with us is part of our regular routine, even while traveling. Another way we help manage Grace's lung health is by incorporating exercises into our daily lives. We consulted with our doctor and we use online resources like joinlungzone.com for movement exercise and mindful breathing techniques. This is a fabulous website, not only to learn more about managing moderate to severe asthma, but also to teach specific and targeted movements and exercises that can help support better lung health. People living with moderate to severe asthma experience wheezing and difficulty breathing. For many people with moderate to severe asthma, attaining control can feel like an ongoing cycle, relying on quick bursts of short-term relief, feeling like asthma attacks are often unavoidable, and making lifestyle adjustments. That's why it's important for people living with asthma to talk to their doctor about treatment options. One potential option is Dupixent also known as Dupilumab. Dupixent is an add-on medication for adults and children six years and older with uncontrolled, moderate to severe, eosinophilic, or oral steroid-dependent asthma to help improve lung function and help prevent severe asthma attacks. Grace isn't taking Dupixent, but you can talk to your doctor to learn more if it's right for you. Do not use if you are allergic to Dupilumab or any of the ingredients in Dupixent. Please continue watching for the full important safety information and see patient information in the description box below. It's time to see lung health as an integral part of asthma control and overall wellness. People with asthma can improve their lung health and do not have to let asthma get in the way. Since we started traveling two years ago, we've worked with our primary care providers to use some medical devices to help keep an eye on everyone's medical concerns if any arise. We use basic tools that anyone can have on hand even without travel. For example, we have an ear and a head thermometer just to be certain that we are getting accurate temperature reads. Another tool we use is a glucose meter. Grace and I have hypoglycemia and sometimes we need to monitor our blood sugar. Managing our doctor's visits has actually been much simpler than we thought it would be. The most complicated part was traveling back for appointments and we are excited to have more of a home base in Florida to reduce a little bit of that stress. Indication. Dupixent is a prescription medicine used with other asthma medicines for the maintenance treatment of moderate to severe eosinophilic or oral steroid-dependent asthma in adults and children six years of age and older whose asthma is not controlled with their current asthma medicines. Dupixent helps prevent severe asthma attacks, exacerbations, and can improve your breathing. Dupixent may also help reduce the amount of oral corticosteroids you need, while preventing severe asthma attacks and improving your breathing.
Dupixent is not used to treat sudden breathing problems. It is not known if Dupixent is safe and effective in children with asthma under 6 years of age. Important safety information. Do not use if you are allergic to dupilumab or to any of the ingredients in Dupixent. Before using Dupixent, tell your healthcare provider about all your medical conditions, including if you have a parasitic Helminth infection, are scheduled to receive any vaccinations. You should not receive a live vaccine right before and during treatment with Dupixent. Are pregnant or plan to become pregnant? It is not known whether Dupixent will harm your unborn baby. A pregnancy registry for women who take Dupixent during pregnancy collects information about the health of you and your baby. To enroll or get more information, call 1-877-311-8972 or go to mothertobaby.org forward slash ongoing dash study forward slash Dupixent. Are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed? It is not known whether Dupixent passes into your breast milk. Tell your healthcare provider about all the medicines you take including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, and herbal supplements. Especially tell your healthcare provider if you are taking oral, topical, or inhaled corticosteroid medicines or use an asthma medicine. Do not change or stop your corticosteroid medicine or other asthma medicine without talking to your healthcare provider. This may cause other symptoms that were controlled by the corticosteroid medicine or other asthma medicine to come back. Dupixent can cause serious side effects, including allergic reactions. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can sometimes be severe. Stop using Dupixent and tell your healthcare provider or get emergency help right away if you get any of the following signs or symptoms. Breathing problems or wheezing, swelling of the face, lips, mouth, tongue, or throat, fainting, dizziness, feeling lightheaded, fast pulse, fever, hives, joint pain, general ill feeling, itching, skin rash, swollen lymph nodes, nausea or vomiting, or cramps in your stomach area. Inflammation of your blood vessels. Rarely this can happen in people with asthma who receive Dupixent. This may happen in people who also take a steroid medicine by mouth that is being stopped or the dose is being lowered. It is not known whether this is caused by Dupixent. Tell your healthcare provider right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, a feeling of pins and needles or numbness of your arms or legs, or persistent fever. Joint aches and pain. Some people who use Dupixent have had trouble walking or moving due to their joint symptoms and in some cases needed to be hospitalized. Tell your healthcare provider about any new or worsening joint symptoms. Your healthcare provider may stop Dupixent if you develop joint symptoms. The most common side effects in patients with asthma include injection site reactions, high count of a certain white blood cell, eosinophilia, pain in the throat or a pharyngeal pain, and parasitic Helminth infections. Tell your healthcare provider if you have any side effect that bothers you or that does not go away. These are not all the possible side effects of Dupixent. Call your doctor for medical advice about side effects. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088. Use Dupixent exactly as prescribed by your healthcare provider. It's an injection given under the skin, subcutaneous injection. Your healthcare provider will decide if you or your caregiver can inject Dupixent. Do not try to prepare and inject Dupixent until you or your caregiver have been trained by your healthcare provider. In children 12 years of age and older, it's recommended Dupixent be administered by or under supervision of an adult. In children 6 to less than 12 years of age, Dupixent should be given by a caregiver. Please see adjacent links for full prescribing information, including patient information. Let us know if you have found these tips helpful and click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. I encourage those of you with moderate to severe asthma to check out joinlungzone.com as a helpful resource. Bye guys.